hello students welcome you all uh, to the next video lecture on uh, the environmental pollution uh, where we will be discussing with respect to uh, soil pollution as well as thermal pollution so already as i have said if you have any doubts with respect to this particular video lecture here on the screen i have highlighted uh, my email ids as you can see here as well as my whatsapp number through which we can communicate and get clarified regarding your doubts so in the previous lecture we have discussed uh, what is an air pollution what is water pollution what are their uh, causes effects as well as the control measures required and now we will be discussing the next kind of pollution that is soil pollution so if you observe carefully here a small photo which i have shown here you can see here there are some battery cells which are uh, uh, disposed on the ground but uh, we say that uh, once this battery cells have uh, yeah, been used we say that there is no energy and we dispose it out to ground directly but students uh, you please remember there will be still chemicals present with them which will be having some energy when they mix or when those chemicals come uh, come out of the cell in the form of leakage and uh, mix the soil the soil becomes poison or it can be toxic this is just an image where i am showing an example of a battery shell which has discharged energy completely and when we throw it out even it is nothing but causing a damage to the earth that is the soil so automatically there are different forms and different causes which are responsible for soil pollution so we'll be discussing them one by one as i said students what are the, the primary causes so the first itself it has been shown at us industrial and mining activities we know that on this earth there are a number of uh, different mineral resources in different parts of the country as well as the world and we human beings are very much interested in exploring uh, the different types of uh, mineral resources and for which we go out doing out continuously the minings so as we go on countries doing the mining we take out the mineral resources we use it and then uh, when the other parts are taken away there are some impurities which have been disposed directly towards the surface or the soil becomes uh, you can say that it becomes uh, completely in the form of uh, energy less so as a result the plants will be unable to grow there there will be no life cycle for the plants or the life cycle reduces similarly if you talk from the industrial point of view as i said students uh, uh, we are using for example uh, there are a lot of industries which uh, they are uh, developing their products and their products once they have been developed they have been used and then uh, the waste sometimes it is thrown away in the form of some effluents to the water bodies and sometimes even to the uh, ground also so before uh, it is treated before it has to be left out it has to be treated well otherwise if this uh, uh, industrial waste it is left out directly to the ground then what happens uh, the ground uh, one day by day it goes on absorbing the toxic materials it becomes poison and the same is used by the plants plants are eaten by the animals and automatically everything goes by so therefore uh, what i would like to say is students here is the industries as well as the mining activities are a very very important cause for the soil pollution so this is where maximum amount of soil pollution is taken away then uh, the next is modern agricultural practices we know that uh, for increase in the agricultural yield every time the farmer tries to use new techniques along with that he wants to use advanced fertilizers pesticides but the more important practice is to run so you should know the quantity of uh, the pesticides and the fertilizers to be used for each kind of crop if there is an excess use to the of the fertilizers or the chemicals so automatically what happens the excess use the it falls on to the ground when it falls on to the ground completely then what happens again the soil becomes toxic Uh, automatically the soil is uh, the nutrients present in the soil are absorbed by the plants plants will prepare toxic food and the same continues towards the animals and the food chain so therefore uh, as i would say students uh, uh, we should see that the fertilizers chem chemicals 
should be used a required quantity itself then the third cause is with respect to the lack of proper waste disposal yes as i said if you take itself our city itself or the taluk itself every day at our home we develop a large amount of garbage the garbage it may be in the form of a vegetable waste it may be in the form of a kitchen waste it may be in the form of some uh, uh, plastics papers or some bottles they are all the waste itself but the way, very important thing is how we dispose it if we dispose them all together completely in a uh, form of a complete garbage itself then certainly students when it is being dumped in the land fill there are different types of bacteria or algae they take the birth and automatically there is a rotting of these things happens automatically the soil becomes polluted and if there are rains occurring then this soil will be carried out to the surrounding water bodies as a result even the water bodies also will be get polluted so therefore yeah, for every kind of waste in the cities if it is not planned then it is nothing to what again the poison of the soil it's that is the soil pollution then regarding radioactive pollutants so you know everywhere nowadays we are very much interested in the nuclear radioactive material so the nuclear radioactive material may be used for the power plants in some places we may use for uh, treatments in the medical field or for some purposes also but the very very important part is once the radioactive material is used if it is disposed of directly onto the land then we know that the radioactive material have the most decay period that is the life cycle so even if the ash when it falls onto the ground it is having the energy that it will not make the plants to grow or it will cut off the life itself and regarding this we have already known regarding the effects of the atomic bombs which were thrown on the japan's two famous cities that is uh, the hiroshima and the nagasaki so uh, imagine still now also there is not a such good life in those two cities that is the hiroshima and the nagasaki so this radioactive pollutants it may be in the form of a dust it may be in the form of the liquid material or in the gases they have to be disposed of carefully if thrown out directly it will have hazard the entire life on that particular region itself then biological agents the biological agents in the sense of students it may be with respect to the animals the birds or the human beings the more amount of excreta or fecal material on the land automatically it will poison even the soil also so there should be proper treatment for these biological agents so that it can be concentrated and it may be made less toxic such that even after usage also the soil may get only less chances of getting poisoning or less toxic then we know that large tankers carrying out the petroleum products uh, like gasoline products are moving throughout the transportation sector so sometimes if there are some accidents you can see that more amount of the petrol diesel or any other products when they are disposed onto the ground then automatically the oil spills happens it mixes with the ground automatically as the mixes mixture happens then there is chances that the soil nutrients get mixed up with this one and if it is taken away by the plant again there is a chain that is a food chain which gets affected so therefore the oil spills also supply some role actually when the accidents happen in damaging the soil nutrients then acid rain so as already we have discussed in the air pollution as well as water pollution regarding the acid rain here also as i said in the air pollution when the air gets polluted the different gases that is the carbon nitrogen sulfur when they mix up with the rain water and when they are falling on the land then the acid rain as it flows through the particular area especially on the land then the soil nutrients are taken away as a result the soil gets polluted so automatically the yield that may be the plant animal life also they get affected because of this soil pollution then what are its effects so there are three major effects first one is on the human health so as you know that we the human beings require 
the energy that is the food food in the form of energy is directly taken from the plants itself so automatically the soil gets polluted then the plants which they are preparing the food they take the same so nutrients from the soil they develop the food that food is given to the uh, different food chain as a result automatically our health goes on deteriorating or gets damaged as a result we may get different types of uh, diseases mainly in the form of a cancer or some uh, disorders sometimes if the soil is very much highly polluted it may even lead to the malnutrition also of the children it may even lead to the malnutrition many times we have heard that the child is not born physically correctly uh, fit because malnutrition happens sometimes even it may lead to the miscarriage of the pregnant ladies also so this is the major cause and apart from that some stomach disorders mutations may also happen so therefore it is having the soil pollution is having a very very adverse effect on the human health then as i said we take the food from the plants itself so automatically sometimes if the toxicity is so much as for example taking the example of the radioactive pollutants on the waste disposal itself if the land becomes too much toxic then the death the plants growing rate it will decrease it will degrade sometimes whatever the food chain is there gets completely affected because of it the survival of the plants decreases they will not get the required nutrients they back and the growth of new type of bacteria or the fungi takes place which are growing in absence of oxygenation oxygen which is leading to what anaerobic respiration automatically what again increasing the air pollution as the soil pollution so the growth of plants also reduce so as i said if the anaerobic respiration goes on increasing obviously even eutrophication will also increase as a result the soil pollution gets degraded as soil pollution increases erosion happens deforestation and much other things are responsible for the soil pollution then what are the control measures some of the control measures they have said regarding till farming so in the areas where the more amount of soil is taken away what you can do is in the form of seeds if you grow the crops then automatically the erosion of soil can be reduced to some extent then growing the crops in the form of steps especially in the hilly region we call it as a counter farming as a result at different levels the water can be stored and the grass uh, crops can be grown because of which the soil erosion with soil can be reduced as nothing but a factor towards the uh, droppage or reducing the soil pollution also you can practice for terracing as well as agroforestry so agroforestry is a concept where if you observe that between the trees small plants or herbs have been uh, planted where automatically even when the heavy rains occur then the roots of those plants herbs as well as shrubs they can hold the tight soil very tightly in such a way that the soil erosion can be stopped then the soil erosion can be stopped the soil nutrients can be regained automatically it is a thing but a step towards the reduction of the soil pollution similarly there are wind breaks or shelter beds where uh, as i said between the big trees if you go on planting the uh, small plants or shrubs then if there is high wind velocity then then this whatever the soil losage that is the soil chance of soil being taken away they can be reduced to a greater extent or sometimes even in heavy rainfall occurs even though the rainfall occurs if the roots are strong enough the shrubs and trees then i think what they are acting as a breakage and automatically the soil erosion can be stopped then if you use the excess use of fertilizers i said uh, the very very important point is uh, regarding the ph value of the soil that is acidic so normally when the ph value if you take if it is in the range of 6.5 to 7 becomes uh, affordable for the plants more number of plants to grow but i suggest is before uh, the farmer a good farmer is one who knows the ph value of his land and depending upon that he can decide which type of crops to be grown and how much amount of fertilizers and pesticides need to be added so in that construct in that context they can uh, communicate with the agricultural departments or the offices where uh, uh, the soil testing is done to know about the soil contents their nutrients their ph value 
and depending upon that they can decide what type of crops can be grown with using less amount of fertilizers and less amount of pesticides so if there is an increase in the uh, pH also you can use uh, some methods such as uh, plowing the land to a greater height where the loosening of the soil happens then uh, removing the salts uh, also it can be done and apart from that if the salt contents are high you can correct it by as I said by plowing to a greater height <coughs> then adding some uh, lime content and all uh, you can uh, reduce then check the soil uh, acidic level as well as the salt level and automatically very very important is the rotation of crops so when you do all these things even the soil pollution is reduced then the productivity is increased as well as you are nothing but contributing towards the decrease in soil pollution activity so this is with respect to soil pollution stunts similarly there is another kind of a pollution which is causing a damage to the environment that is the thermal pollution so the name itself says students thermal is nothing but the heat which is there this heat it is where it is entering especially the water bodies so when it enters the water bodies then automatically it leads to the water <coughs> changes in the environment of the water bodies and it leads to their uh, 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 hindrances of that environment nothing but a cause of the thermal pollution so as I said his heat we know that especially all the industries all the factories which they are using they even need water for running different types of machines and all so therefore when we are using their water in a large quantity then the water which is coming out its temperature alters and when it enters the water body certainly it is affecting even the water aquatic ecosystem also now if we discuss one by one here and now regarding the thermal pollution he has said that when we are using water as a cooling agent especially in the power sector manufacturing industrial plants we know that water is used in the form of a coolant where the different machines are run then the loss of it is taken away or the excess amount of it is taken away by the water when the water comes out of this power plants or the manufacturing plants their temperature has been altered that is it is reached to a higher temperature stage and if this water enters directly into the water bodies obviously the plant life and animal life they get affected inside the ecosystem it is the aquatic ecosystem which means it disturbs the aquatic ecosystem so when this goes on continuously for a large amount of time certainly there is a decrease in the ecosystem itself it is just like uh, every day at your home if you are experiencing that high temperature range going for all the 12 months automatically you say that I am not comfortable in this home either uh, if you don't have any chance you try to live there and then you may vanish or suddenly you may shift so the same happens even for the life cycle which is there in this aquatic ecosystem then apart from that the next type of coils is soil erosion what is soil erosion here as i said students now when the when the water bodies when you go on adding the water every time it is uh, the water coming out from the power plants manufacturing industrial plants the level of the water in the water bodies also goes on increasing and automatically the surrounding uh, soil content which is there are nearby the lakes or the rivers as the water gets over filled up then it takes away the soil from the surrounding banks automatically there is a decrease degradation of the vegetation and there is a damage even for the plant life as well as the animal life then if there are deforestation is also a major cause how it is a major cause yeah, as i said students in the deforestation the plants and animals uh, the plants like that is that the number of trees are decreased so when the number of trees are decreased so automatically the solar rays which are there it directly falls on the what the water bodies so automatically more number of water rays there is a rise in temperature level of the water there is a rise in the temperature of the level of the water continuously happening so automatically there is a problem in the food chain of the ecosystem which is the thing but it is also a cause for the thermal pollution then uh, runoff from the paved surfaces this is especially which is happening especially in the cities and the uh, taluk places where nowadays we see that uh, all the roads are made up of birch material stones they are made up of concrete material and especially in the summer season uh, 
<coughs> we know that the concrete roads temperature reaches to very high temperature and suddenly if the water is flowing from these roads and enters the water bodies as i said already there is a change in the temperature of that and again when it enters it damages the life cycle of the water bodies then natural causes so for thermal uh, pollution natural causes which are happening is due to the volcanoes whatever the hot gases are coming out in the mix of the water bodies these hot gases along with their uh, uh temperature when they mix the water bodies uh, they give out the toxic material to the plants and animals present in them as a result they feed them and it may damage the entire system itself it may be the volcanoes it may be one in the uh, forest catching the fire or it may be one in the storms also so these are some of the natural causes which are responsible for the thermal pollution then uh, retention ponds retention ponds especially on thermal power plants students we know that uh, during the rankin cycle when the water when the water is taken for the formation of steam and when it comes out from the turbine it is always in the you can say the temperature is being dropped but still it is in the steam phase itself that is a two phase mixture uh, so to bring it back to the liquid phase we pass it through a uh, cooling tower then passing on to the uh, natural uh, other pond so when the temperature of the water has not come to the initial level if we suddenly dispose it off again the temperature of the water in the pond varies as a result it is a damage to the uh, water water uh, vegetation which is uh, living in the water bodies then domestic sewage that is uh, we know that the domestic sewage which is coming from the city which is being collected when it is dumped to the water bodies the temperature of that domestic sewage is completely different from the fresh water bodies so automatically as it enters there it is a huge loss as for the animal life and plant life are very high risk as a result even their death occurs continuously that is the reason that for every city is the municipal corporation have kept uh, or developed some plants we call them as a sewage water treatment plants where before the water is been disposed of to the water bodies it is been treated here such a way that the temperature as well as the toxicity can be reduced to a greater extent and then disposed of then thermal electric power generation and hydroelectric power generation are thing but here the for the power generation the water is used as a source and once the water is been disposed of there is a variation in the temperature range so this variation of the temperature is especially in the fresh water bodies makes a very huge impact it disturbs the entire life cycle automatically the uh, plant life decreases then the animal feeding one then decreases all the result it affects mainly the water stones it affects the mainly the food chain as well as the food web so therefore uh, even uh, these are all thing but they are the causes which are responsible for the loss of uh, for the thermal pollution then what are the effects yes as on the land how we are breathing the oxygen here in the water also students uh, there is a uh, demand we call it as a do that is dissolved oxygen levels so as the hot water goes on entering the fresh water bodies obviously the dissolved oxygen levels goes on decreasing which means the plants and animals which they are living there for them breathing becomes very much tougher it is just like how we are facing due to air pollution <coughs> especially in the metropolitan cities becomes more tough for breathing for us similarly here also it becomes more tougher because the do level that is the dissolved oxygen level in the fresh water bodies it goes on decreasing as a result it becomes difficult for the life to sustain within the water bodies so not only this happens as the sewage is being dumped continuously the radioactive material may be also be dumped so automatically there are chances of water the water becoming more toxic <coughs> poison the more poison if that water is used by the plants living in them they they are eaten by the fish fish is eaten by the uh, human beings again what happens uh, the food chain becomes uh, more dangerous or it affects uh, also the food chain which is nothing but directly we are only destroying the system loss of biodiversity yes so as i said because of toxicity if there is change there is a death then uh, once food chain is affected automatically the biodiversity gets affected the biodiversity gets affected there is a reduction in the entire cycle 
then ecological effect as i said there as a number of organisms goes on decreasing for a particular ecosystem it may be aquatic or a marine ecosystem each particular organism it is having its each particular role so the organism decreases or their life cycle reduces or their number decreases automatically in the future days it will be having an impact on the ecology which is nothing but balancing becomes more more tougher especially for the particular ecosystem then uh, affects the reproductive systems this is a very very important part students especially it may be a plant it may be an animal or any microorganisms when their comfortability is taken away the more important effect is happening to their reproductive system itself sometimes the number may decrease or sometimes this is completely vanished itself as i said just now in the previous case for the human beings there are some miscarriages of malnutrition the same happening here also then in some cases it may increase the metabolic rate if the metabolic rate increases it means that more number of quantity of water is required so automatically everything the nutrition happens increase the metabolic rate is not nothing but it is a sign of how any adverse effect is happened to those water bodies and sometimes as i said if the if uh, the things that is the living things in the ecosystem uh, they feel that it is unfavorable for them definitely they switch they leave of that place and shift on to a new place where there is favorable thing the migration so migration of the things is thing what it is representing regarding the comfortability of each organisms then the next we have is the control measures what are the control measures some of the control measures students what you can do is we can have proper cooling ponds cooling towers so what you can do is in the especially the power plants or the industries before the water is left out towards uh, the natural water bodies you can have some cooling ponds and cooling towers where the water is uh, kept for certain hours because of which uh, the heat loss happens directly to the atmosphere that is dissipation happens and after that as the temperature reduces gradually so it can be taken away and dumped to the fresh water bodies so even the cooling towers especially in the power plants they do the same service where the warm steam when it passes through the baffle plates the heat is taken away by the time it reaches to the lower part of the cooling tower completely its temperature has been reduced similarly in some industries or some purposes we can create some artificial lake where the water can be added and it can be retained for certain amount of time as a result the temperature reduces the toxins are reduced because of evaporation and then it can be carried out then water recycling students this is a more important concept many times at our home we do daily this thing is uh, we use the water for one purpose and we just uh, uh, flow make it to flow direct towards the sewage for example from the washing machine whatever the water is coming out directly we throw to the sewage line itself but instead of that uh, if you do in such a fashion that whatever the output of water which is coming from the washing machine if you feed or make it the direction to go towards the plants which are there in your garden so automatically the plants get to see the water itself so it is nothing but a method of just water reusing in a best way it is not recycling in a reusing in a best way similarly in some cases wherever it is possible try to reduce the toxins recycle the water to some extent such that after recycling if it is made fully <coughs> low concentrated then the toxin levels are reduced and it can be taken away for further applications the result as i said we can use for industrial and space heating yes if you have proper industrial and space heating then automatically the thermal pollution can be reduced to greater extent it is nothing but hvac hvac at your home we discussed regarding vastu it is nothing but if you have good air entering with ventilation and living out with the good conditions automatically the space heating happens as a result to a greater extent you can reduce the thermal pollution then regarding the biological applications such as soil warming reduces and if you are there are certain and in the nature of students very very important thing is there are some organisms which their activities defined in such a fashion that they can uh, clean even the sewage water also the gods gift you can say i so there are some organisms so such kind of uh, fishes or livestock shelters if you leave them especially in the uh, sewage water before being a uh, Uh, dumped onto the fresh water bodies so they have the capacity to clean the water reduce the toxin levels temperatures such a way that it becomes uh, favorable for the organisms and it continues so these are uh, some things with respect to the soil pollution and thermal pollution 
i hope i have cleared your doubts so apart from that if you have any doubts again as i said you can uh, communicate to the email id is and in the next session we will be discussing some more points with respect to the noise pollution as well as nuclear hazards uh, thank you students